What's good, people? Welcome to another edition of Every Man is a Millionaire. Today, we're going to talk about this often debated topic. Does money buy happiness? And it's something I've been kicking around for a minute. I have a different opinion about it now. I believe money buys happiness. Yep, sure do. And I'm honestly going to prove it to you in this video. Be sure to watch from the beginning to the end so you don't miss nothing. If you don't know who I am, I'm Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here at Every Man is a Millionaire is get rich through entrepreneurship. We're about starting those businesses and starting those hustles. So if you want to start a business, you're in the right place. Before we get into it, do me a solid. Go below, get on the text notification list. YouTube does not send everyone that is subscribed to this channel an alert when there's a new video or live stream. I know it's sad. So you don't want to miss any of this hot content. So go up below, get on that list and you'll be sure to receive notifications when I drop something. So with that, let's begin. The best way to set this off is to start with the person that I used to be. Many of you will identify with that person. I used to be extremely economical. That's a fancy word for cheap. I had to get maximum value. So I did that. And then I got a lot of great deals and, and I was hustling. Then something happened. I came to YouTube, I wrote a book, it took off, and then I had more money than I knew what to do with. Things slowly changed because if you see in the earlier videos, I'm still battling the old me, battling the new me. Then it happened. One day I was in the store and it was this shirt that I really liked and it was 250 bucks and I just bought it. And as I was coming out and I was getting to my car, I literally froze. I was like, did you just do that? Every instinct, every urge in me said, take that shirt back and get your money back and buy something cheaper. But I really liked the shirt. It's one of my favorite shirts. I still wear it to this day. And it, it, it began to really set in. When money buys happiness, it's because you're self-directed and self confident. Once again, money only buys happiness if you're self-directed, self-confident, because let me break it down for you. I have a 2004 Audi S4 for you car guys. You know what that is. Uh, to regular people, it just looks like an old yellow car. I had to put a lot of money into that car to get it you know, back to the way it was. And then I put money in there that I wanted to put in there to redo the exhaust, to chip it up, lowered it, got some nice rims. And every time I go outside, it's like, yeah. You know, every time I come from the back, I'm like, yeah, I like that. Part of money buying you happiness is, and this is really, really hard, you have to know what you want. See, if you have a lot of money and you're full of psychosis, you're paranoid and you don't know what you want, you can spend millions of dollars and you will not be happy. Matter of fact, on your level, you're not rich, but you spend money on something you really are not keyed in on. You don't know if you really want it. And you're like, ah, I spent that money, threw it in the closet, never wore it. It's because you didn't really want that. But when you have money and you buy things that you really, really want, you're happy. I'll tell you a little story. I used to work out at Lifetime Fitness. And there was this employee who was just disgustingly rude to me. I didn't even go to management. My membership was month to month. It was the end of the month. I said, I'm out, deuces. So I went home, went on the internet, and I started ordering gym equipment. Now let's unpack that. I was in a gym, someone was rude to me. Very, very rude. Did I write leather stuff? No, I just took my business elsewhere. This is what most people do. When you're rude or people are mistreated, they just take their money and go. They don't complain. They just leave. So now I have this home gym, which incidentally is less than a year of membership at this gym. I'm happy in my gym. I'm happy that I don't have to wait for anyone to get off the squat machine. I'm happy that I don't have to wait for someone to get off the app machine. I am happy. Money gives you options. Options gives you choices. Choices make you happy. When people say, does money buy happiness? There's a lot of context that's left outside the conversation. We as Americans like to truncate and just skip over the good stuff. Just, hey, 
Give it to me. Give it to me quick. Give me what I need so I can go on to the next insipid thing. Once again, if you are self-confident, self-directed, money does indeed buy you happiness. If you know what you want, money buys you happiness. But why are so many people saying that money doesn't buy you happiness? Good question. I have an answer. They don't have any money. We've talked about this before. I've put up stats. I've showed you that for you to be in the top 1% of income earners, you don't have to make a million dollars a year. It's uh, depending upon where you live, it's 280 to 380 is what you have to make, which is, even at the higher number, that's still almost three times less than a million bucks. People have false sense of what wealth is, what money is, and it's always exaggerated because so many people live in a state of lack that they never ever think that they could ever have that type of money in their life. So they fantasize and romanticize what rich people do versus rolling up their sleeves, working hard and attempting to become rich. It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can do it. I have faith in you. But that's the reason because most people don't have money and it's this thing that births all of these urban legends because the narrative is, and I'm going to do this video. I live in a wealthy neighborhood. I'm going to show you how rich people live. And part of the reason is that you have these urban stories is you might have one person who's well off and he's or she is in a sea of people who have lack. So they're that one person against thousands of people. Of course, they're going to be thrifty. Of course, they're not going to show off because they don't want to be attacked. But when rich people band together where your neighbor is not that far off from you, where your neighbor's house is like you live in a house that's 900,000, your neighbor lives in a house that's 1.2. Once you get past 500,000, it gets very comparable. And that's also incidentally where the jumbo loan thing starts. I think it starts at 450, 500,000, something like that. I want you guys to stop fantasizing about rich people. I want you guys to stop making up stories about rich people to make yourself feel better. Yes, there are some dysfunctional rich people. Yes, there are some cheap, cheap, cheap rich people. But those who are self-confident, self-directed, and know exactly what they want, they are so happy. Their families are happy. Their children are good. Their children are happy. Those are the keys. Those are the three keys. The three keys. Self-directed, self-confident, and knowing exactly what you want. And a bonus deal is once you get it, be grateful that you got it. We have people in uh, Stephen or Gary Swartz. It's called a paradox of choice. And it goes like this. The more choices you have, the more unhappy that you will be. Once again, the more choices that you have, and you can find the video here on YouTube, look up the paradox of choice. Let me explain to it, because once again, you're not self-directed, you're not self-confident, and you don't know what you want. Because see, when you know what you want, and you get what you want, you're happy. But see, uh, there was this uh, movie, Confessions with Ben Kingsley and I believe Alec Baldwin. And the guy said something that was so deep. It was very, very deep. He said, it isn't that people don't know how to do the right thing. The issue is knowing what is the right thing to do. And it's very nuanced, but that fits perfectly into this conversation because if you don't know what you want, you can spend and spend and do drugs and all this stuff, and you're still going to be a big, empty vessel. But when you start acquiring things that you really like and really want, give you an example. And this is going to shock you. When you get a woman that you really want, you will value her like you value no other woman. When you get a woman that is exactly what you want, you are so happy. You are so content. And unfortunately, most men don't get the woman that they want because most men have not defined her. It ain't about the baddest chick. It ain't about the biggest booty. 
It's about you sitting down. Oh, yeah, we talk about that, the disruptive male. Write up your dream girl template. Now, what we're going to do is go a little further in this video. What you should do is write up your life template. You should today, not tomorrow, but today, sit down with pen and paper and write down exactly what you want out of life. You got to know what you want to get it. As long as you stay in a state of confusion or like many people, as long as you keep letting your friends, your neighbors and society at large say, hey, this is for you. This is what a good woman looks like. This is what wealth looks like. This is what you need to do. When you start living like that, you ain't living for yourself. You're living to impress people that you don't know who don't care about you. And it's a trap. It's a deep, deep trap. Sit down and ask yourself these questions. How much money do I want to make? You hear people saying, oh, I want to make as much as possible. Not good enough. Put a number on it. And then put a date on it. I want to make $450,000 per year within the next three years through entrepreneurship. I want to make $2 million a year. I'm going to create music that gives me millions of fans who buy my, write down what you want. Be courageous because see, if you're writing some down and your heart's beating fast and your fingers shaking, that's it. Because your goal is so big, it scares you. And that's going to generate so much energy. If you just write something you know you can easily accomplish, no, that's not going to do much for you. So make your goals big. Make them audacious. And then two, as you become the person you are meant to become and you start getting money and you start like one of my favorite dudes of Swiss Beats, Kareem. He buys art. He really is into art. And there's this video of him skating around his house with all this cool art. He likes that stuff for real. He's getting what he wants. Now, once again, y'all ain't gonna like this example. Kareem wanted the Alicia Keys and everybody was like, oh, she's a homebreaker or whatever, whatever. Kareem said, I need that in my life. And he went out and got it. He got exactly what he wanted. You hear anything about Swiss Beats? Because he's happy. Because he got what he wanted. And if he didn't have that money, and not to say Alicia Keys is a gold digger because she has her money in her own right, it's more about a level of accomplishment. Swiss Beast is extremely accomplished, and so is uh, Alicia Keys, so they're very compatible. So he had to get to that level to be in the position to get her. See where I'm going with this? Being happy is about responsibility. Being happy is about doing stuff. There is a responsibility component that comes with the happiness component. And a lot of people just don't want to be responsible. They just want to live and be happy. But the more they live and the more they try to be happy, the more elusive it seems to be because they've never made a decision about what they really want in life. They're just hoping and wishing, going by social defi socially defined standards of what's good and what's not good. I talk about this on Disruptive Mail all the time. Just because a woman is hot does not mean that she's a good woman. Just because a dude has a six pack doesn't mean he's a good dude. But many of us, that's all you need. She pretty. She got the baby hair. She got a big booty. She's a good woman. I think not. What about a character? Is she a kind person? Is she reasonable? And this is a big one if you're talking about getting married. Does she fight fair? There was a study done on couples who fight fairly and couples who don't fight fairly. Guess which one has the highest divorce rate? Couples who fight fairly rarely get divorced. Couples who go after each other are divorced on the regular. True story. So go ahead and chop that up. I know many of you will disagree with me because you want to believe in these social narratives and you want to live on these romantic tales. Of, this is what rich people do when you yourself are not rich and you don't know a lot of rich people. Knowing one rich person, congratulations. You want a cookie? How about if you know a few hundred of them? That's a sample size where you can really see what rich behavior looks like. And I'm telling you, once again, if it's a rich person by the lonesome amongst you mutants, amongst you animals, okay, yeah, they may be ultra conservative and ultra cheap because they don't want to be attacked by you. 
But if you got a group of rich people all living in the same neighborhood, you ain't going to see that behavior. You're not going to see that behavior at all. You ain't. I'm just going to tell you, and I'm going to do this video of this neighborhood because it's going to take me some time to put it together. And I'm just going to go five miles away from my house in each direction. That's it. Maybe two. That's enough to show you what I'm talking about. So once again, go ahead, put that in the comments. And once again, if you don't want to miss any of this hot content, go below and get on the text notification list and I will hook you up as soon as I drop some knowledge. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. You have a good day, you have a productive day, and I hopefully you're getting some money because money does buy happiness. It really does.